being on a high, painting a picture of aerodynamic precision, the tour lapses to a considerable low point. A fall, though not a simple one, six riders down, three needing hospitalisation. A police motorcycle escort collided with a parked car and ricocheted into the bunch. A police escort vehicle has lost control and smashed into the main bunch. Young South Australian Wayne McCarney is one of the victims. With the closely packed bunch travelling at such high speeds, these riders had little chance of escape. The police officer is not injured, but six riders have not been so lucky. In an attempt to keep the riders to the far left of the road, the police motorcyclist lost his concentration and clipped the side of this car on the right of the road. The motorcycle flipped into the air, ploughing into the bunch of riders. American Todd Palmer has had a miraculous escape with only a few abrasions. McCarney's injuries are more serious. He has a broken nose and deep facial lacerations. He will eventually be hospitalised. His race has finished in futility and despair. Despite the force of the collision, his injuries are the most severe of all the cyclists who've been involved. New South Wales Steve Griffiths is in shock. He's not badly hurt, but his injuries are enough to take him out of the race with McCarney. As the highway is cleared, the riders and race organisers count their losses. Australia's Los Angeles gold medalist Kevin Nichols will have to withdraw. His bike smashed beyond repair. And uh, I swear for less than Mr. Riders are going over his bike that uh, hit him. You hit the bike? Uh, I'm not sure whether I hit the bike or the policeman, but uh, you can see what happened to the bike. It was pretty hard with every hit. That's pure carbon fibre and just snapped it like a bloody match The uh, policeman hit onto the car and bounced back into the field. And uh, he just knocked us all down. Where was he looking? Well, he was uh, playing the galah for about the last mile or so, trying to knock us across the road with his bike, you know, swinging hooks into the bunch instead of getting ahead and uh, watching out for traffic, you know. And uh, I was on the right side of the road. But I copped him when he crashed and flew across in front of us. You came down? Yeah. And got cannoned into a couple of bikes, did you? On the way down? Or? No, they ran over me. They ran over you? Yeah. You were trying to control the, the cars on one side of the road, was that the story? No, the bikes were all over the road. All sorted. Right. There you go, man. Dick Kennedy. Palmer also has a story to tell. Well, we were riding along, and he was trying to push us back over the yellow line, and uh, the car was on the shoulder of the road, and. Uh, just in enough room or whatever, but he ran into the side of the car. And his cycle did a flip and he flipped kind of into the group and I was right next to him when he did it. And he took me down and the motorcycle didn't land on top of me, but and I did flips and everything. Next thing I knew I was on the ground, it was like that. And all I could see was bikes and bodies flying everywhere. And I'm real fortunate I didn't break anything. And I just have a few muscle strains and bruises and things here and in the hip. And I just saw too many guys with blood running on their faces and everything else. It was just awful. I mean, it's like, Something that shouldn't happen, but it, it did, you know. It's happened so quickly. It, it's, yeah, one second you're up and you see the car coming and, and you really, you know, it's on the side of the road, you really don't look for it. And then one second you're up, next second you're on the ground. And it, it hurts, we were going fast, you know. The whole field has been pulled over and the riders regrouped for a restart. Race organiser Phil Bates instructs the riders on their current position. What I would like to uh, say is that we can't proceed without an escort. And the escort will... Uh, be filing a few reports before they get here. The ambulance has arrived down the back and taken uh, the riders uh, to hospital. And uh, I checked them all and they seem in reasonably good spirits. The riders that are in the leading group will be commenced with a time gap. The last time gap was exactly one minute and that's the gap they will start from. We can just listen to Sergeant Peggy and then we can get back on our bikes and start racing again. 
and uh, get the Conwall thing sorted, it's basically underway. Yeah, uh, as you know, well, there's been an accident. Uh, fortunately, it's not serious at this stage, there doesn't seem to be any, there's only minor cuts and bruises. Um, it's one of these unfortunate things that uh, has happened that we didn't want to happen. And I think perhaps what I was saying to you all earlier, perhaps might have come home a bit uh, harder now. Um, we're going to continue the race very shortly. You'll get the time from Mr Bates. And you now know that what can happen. So again, it's up to everybody to just take as much care as they can. That's all I'm going to say about it. The leaders are sent on their way with a time gap according to their position before the accident. The main bunch anxiously waits for the starter's signal so they can renew their chase. In seconds. Five, four, three, the tour is over for several unlucky ones. Dean Woods has had enough as well. Certainly not Steve Hodge though. Uh, I w didn't see the accident. I don't know really how it happened. Um, uh, it's unfortunate, you know, the police rightly, I think, treated it just simply as an accident. And really, you know, apart from the unfortunate side of things, I didn't get too upset about it, so...